So the first thing we're going to do is use Cargo Generate, which we just installed, to generate our smart contract project. So this is just pulling this repo down from GitHub. It's a basic secret template. It's a great way to start out building on Secret Network is to have this predefined contract that's extremely simple that you can then you know, build on top of that. Um, so it's pulling this from GitHub and then we can name it whatever we want. I'm just going to keep it the same as here as my simple counter. And I'm just going to run this command in my terminal. And I want to make sure that I'm on my desktop. And now when I run this cargo generate command, it's going to pull this smart contract info from GitHub. And this is what we're actually going to be using to build for this tutorial today. So it comes with these main files, the state, the message, the contract, the library. Message is what we're going to look at today. This is just all of the functionality that our contract is actually doing, right? And all this, this is is a super basic counter contract where you, you start with a count, you know, like one, two, whatever you suits your fancy. And then you're able to increment that count by one. You can reset the count. And then you're also able to query the state of the smart contract to know what count we're currently at. And we do that with this query message get count. So all we're going to be doing in this tutorial today is using secret CLI to interact with this smart contract, to deploy it to the blockchain, and then to interact with it. So there's three steps to deploying a secret smart contract. There is, you first have to upload the code, which is, you do that by uploading the optimized WASM code. The second step is to actually instantiate the contract. And that just means you're instantiating the code with reference to an initial starting state. And for our purposes, that's just going to be the starting count that we're going to instantiate the contract with. And then thirdly, we're actually going to execute the contract, which just means we're going to use it. We're going to in increment the count and we're going to query the count. So the first thing we do is optimize the WASM. And we do that with make build. That's why we installed make. So we say make build. And what that's going to do is generate our WASM file. So that's all running in my terminal. And while this is doing, while this is optimizing our, our WASM file, what we're going to do is create a containerized version of Secret Network in Docker. And the way we create this containerized version of Secret Network is we run this command right here. And again, I am in the setting up your environment section of the documentation. So all you do is you run this command here. This is just opening up a reference to Secret Network in Docker. So I'm going to, I open up another tab of my terminal and I'm just going to run that command. And what's going to happen here is we're actually going to see us initiating the blockchain. It's pretty awesome. And like literally what we're going to see down here is blocks being made in real time. All right. So look right here, searching for height, height number two, that's block height two. And then every seven seconds or so, another block will be issued. So there's height three. So now if I were to open up Docker, which I will do, we'll actually see this container referenced inside of Docker. So look now in my VS code terminal, I launched local secret and we now have this reference inside of Docker. Pretty cool. And whenever you're working with local secret, you need to have this containerized version of it running, or you're not going to actually be able to, you know, work with local secret. And just another thing to note is, your state and all the contracts that you're uploading and making changes to, they only they live inside of this container. So if you delete this container, you're going to have to re-upload and instantiate your contract each time. Just make note of that. So now we have generated our contract WASM file by running make build. And what that does is just outputs that WASM file here. So this is just in our source folder, it generates this contract.wasm file and also the contract.wasm.gz file. And now that we have Docker up and running, one last thing that we need to do is just configure our secret CLI to work with our containerized version of local secret in Docker. And we do that by just copying this here into our terminal. So I'm just going to take this, I'm going to go back into my VS code. And this is just in the home folder for my simple counter. I'm going to run this command. Now we're going to store the contract on the blockchain, right? So this blockchain that we just created, that we just initiated in Docker, we're going to actually upload the contract to the blockchain. And we do that by running 
this command in the terminal. So anything we do with secret CLI, it starts with this secret CLI command. And we're going to run secret CLI transaction, that's TX, compute, store, and then it's referencing that WASM file that we just generated with make build right here. And then it gives the amount of gas we use for the transaction. And then it says from A. What A is, is the wallet address that's actually interacting with the blockchain. And I think something that would be cool for everyone watching this to learn is just how to use secret CLI to actually create a wallet that you can use for testing purposes and then also fund it with a local secret faucet. So let's do that. Um, so before we go to store this in local secret, we're going to create a wallet and fund it and then use that wallet we just created to actually store, instantiate and interact with the contract that we are uploading to the secret blockchain. All right, and the way we do that, so we go back to VS Code, and you do it with this command, which is secret CLI, right? Because everything we do with secret CLI starts with this command. We run secret CLI, keys, add, and then the name of our wallet. So I'm just going to call it my wallet, which I've used before, so it's probably going to ask me to overwrite. Overwrite existing wallet name. I'm going to say yes. And then beautiful. So this is the wallet that I just created on Local Secret, and you know it has your private mnemonic, it has the address, and it also has the public key, and it also has the the wallet address. So the next step is to actually fund this wallet because right now there's no funds in this wallet and. You can learn these commands just by going through the documentation, which I highly recommend doing. But some of the more important ones is like you might want to query um, how much mu like funds your wallet has. So we're going to query this wallet we just created. Um, and since we just created it, it should have zero secret. So we say secret CLI query bank balances. And then we write the wallet address. So our wallet address of the wallet we just created is right here. I'm just going to paste that in. All right, so the balance is currently zero, and now we're going to fund it with a thousand secret using the secret faucet. And the way we do that is step one, I'm just going to initiate this address variable. So I'm going to take the address that I just created and just set it equal to address in the terminal, right? So I'm running address is equal to, and then the address that I just generated, enter. And then we run this command here, curl HTTP localhost 5000 faucet question mark address, and then we set it equal to the address variable that we just configured. And this information is all in the docs that we were just looking at. Okay. So we have a transaction hash, which means that it should be successful. And what we can do now is just use that same command that we just used, query bank balances, and we should now have a thousand secret. Here we go. So now we've generated our optimized WASM. We have our containerized version of local secret running. And we have a wallet that we've funded with secret, which means that we're now able to upload our contract to the blockchain. This is all in the documentation again, in the getting started, compile and deploy section. So the way we do this is just by saying this command here, secret CLI, transaction, compute, store, and then it locates the WASM the file that we just generated, gives us a gas amount, and then the wallet address. But you see how this says A? That's a wallet that comes preceded with local secret. We're gonna switch that out to be our wallet that we just generated so in our case, it's going to be called my wallet. So I'm going to take this command here and we're going to go back into VS code. And let me just clear this. So we have, all right, so I'm pasting that in, but and instead of a, right, we're saying my wallet because that's the wallet address that we're using to fund this uploading transaction. Okay, great. And then when we receive this transaction hash, and to verify that that was successful, what we can then do is run secret CLI 
query, anytime we do a query, we're using the query command, compute list code. All right, and now we have a creator, a code hash, and a code ID, which in this instance is one. And the creator wallet address is the same address of the wallet that I just generated called my wallet. All right, so now that we've uploaded our contract, the next step is to instantiate our contract. And we can do that running this code here, secret CLI, transaction compute instantiate, and you have to do it at the code ID that we just uploaded. So that transaction code ID was one. That's why we're gonna have one. And note that for this contract, the one that's in the documentation, the instantiation message is blank, but ours is gonna be different because we're instantiating the counter contract and the counter contract has a count instantiation variable. So let's do that. I'm gonna go back into VS Code. And again, this is our code ID is one. Let's do this. So we run what we run is secret CLI transaction compute instantiate at code ID one. And then we have our count variable, and this is JSON. And we're gonna make it leet. 1337 is gonna be our starting count number because we're cool like that. And then we have to say from the wallet that we're doing this from. So we're gonna do the wallet that we seeded, which is my from my wallet. And we're gonna give it a label. We'll just call it my counter contract. Yes, okay. So this should instantiate our contract. Let's see what happens. And now to make sure that that worked, we can query it. All right, and what you should see is your contract address. So I already I had another contract already instantiated when I was testing this out, but the one we just did at starting variable 1337 is this contract address. This is pretty magical, right? Because now we actually have our contract address that we can work with. So when we query the contract now at this address, what should happen is we should have the starting count of 1337. So let's check that out. Um, the first thing I want to do is just create a contract variable that we can reference. So let's just take this contract address that we just generated. There we go. So just do contract equals and then the contract address, no dollar sign. And now we can actually reference this contract with um, execute and query commands. So if we want to see the current contract count, let's query it. We're gonna run secret CLI query compute and then we're gonna query the contract and then we're gonna call the get count function. All right. And one thing to make note of is see how get count here looks different than our get count query message. That's just because the way this gets transpiled to JSON, it becomes snake case. So we're just taking this get count and then it becomes snake case. And we're just calling this function on our smart contract. So now when we run this, what we should get back is 1337. Oop, I made a mistake somewhere. Oh, yep. Fret not if you make mistakes. I just forgot a quote, quotation. There we go, all right, our count is leet. So now we are interacting with our smart contract that we uploaded and instantiated on our local version of Secret Network. So we'll, let's call the increment function next, just to sh show this and then we'll query it again. So we're gonna increment our contract by one, right? 
And all we do to do that is we just run secret CLI, transaction compute, execute, and then at the contract address, which we set it to this contract variable. And then we say increment. Oops. Okay, and notice that the difference between this execute command and this query command is that for the execute command, we also have to include a wallet address because when we're querying the state of the blockchain, we're not actually writing anything to the blockchain. We're just querying the data that already exists. So there's no gas involved with that transaction. Whereas for this, we're actually executing a command which requires gas on the blockchain, which is why we need to have our wallet associated with this transaction. So I added this increment functionality, and that's just, again, that's literally just calling this, and it's in snake case, so it's lowercase. Um, and what we should, let's see what happens. All right, so this is our, we have to confirm the transaction. This is our transaction hash. And now, when we query the contract again, right, it should be 1338 count 1338. All right, everybody, that has been our tutorial. Congratulations on making it this far. If you ran into any issues that I didn't run into while I was doing this tutorial, you should totally check out the Secret Network Discord. There's a super active developer community there and everyone's very friendly and willing to help. So if you have any questions, just join the Discord and I'll be there to help you and answer any questions you might have. Thanks everybody for watching. I hope you learned a lot following along with this tutorial. We did a lot, we configured our environment, we learned how to upload, instantiate, and interact with smart contracts using local secret. And you should be proud of yourself and I'm so excited to see what you build next. Thanks everybody.